Hello, welcome back to Jamie's Man Cave. Another beer review for you, a review of a beer kit. So this one was the Cooper's Australian Pale Ale. And um, it's been in the bottle in the garage for quite a few months now. I just haven't got around to reviewing it for you. I've had quite a few of the bottles and that there is a five litre keg out there as well waiting to be used. But I didn't want to open that up today because I'm not going to drink it all in one go and I don't want to waste it. So the Cooper's Australian Pale Ale, if you've watched the beginning of this video, hopefully you have seen the sort of brewing pro process be behind that, the, the opening of the, the, the tin and the kit. Um, and then we'll... Um... We'll have a look at the beer as well. So, I don't know if the light's very good, and apologies for the dodgy camera angle. I've had some nice comments about camera angles in the past, but um, this one's for genuine reasons, because I can't find the... Um, I can't find the selfie stick, which is what I usually use to prop up the, the camera angle. So I'm just on a little um, little uh, phone holder. So bear with me. Um, a bit of a orangey golden looking pour. Nice bit of head, carbonation. It's quite frothy and foamy. So it's, it's a bit more of a sparkling style uh, as it would probably be in cask form. And that's what I'm hoping that five litre keg is going to be like. Um, I've been on a UK Homebrewers Forum, I think they're called. Shout out for them. Um, because they've given me some good tips and, and things in terms of carbonating a or secondary um, fermenting in a five litre keg. So fingers crossed that works out there. So yeah, Cooper's Australian Pale Ale, which I'm calling the Aussie Pale because I've made some alterations to this one. So in this one, I have included extra um, dry hop additions, which were some Nelson Suvin, uh, which is very popular at the moment. It seems to be one of them big hop uh, flavours um, and additions that are popping up a lot of places, actually. And the more that since I've done this, the more and more I've seen of the Nelson Suvin popping up in different beers and around the place in pale ales and IPAs and obviously New Zealand pales and that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's a bit of citra in there as well. Well, there's a bit more citra in there than there is Nelson, actually. Uh, so the idea behind it was I wanted a fairly decent, in terms of homebrew kits, uh, I wanted a fairly reliable base to do something with. And I wanted to do something that was going to be my spring slash summertime beer, that refreshing kind of taste. And I was looking for a little bit of hop extra hop hit and Nelson Suvin kept popping up in my searches so I thought well I'm going to try that because with it being an Australian pale and Nelson Suvin originating in New Zealand it's not that far away um, in terms of you know climates and how it's grown and everything it's probably a world apart but um, in my thinking at the time that's where I was going with it and then of course with the Citra the old faithful and the classic hop that um, that's used in, in, in pale ales and IPAs throughout. So slight change up to the, the format of the this video, hopefully. Uh, I'll probably be a little talking head by now, sipping on my beer, chatting away. Whereas uh, if I'm not, and this is a full video, then apologies, my editing skills weren't up to par. But trying to get a bit of a smell of, of what's in there. Definitely some sort of green sort of fleshy fruits like a grape or maybe even kiwi possibly grapefruit it smells quite nice and enticing let's have a little taste nice carbonation there's a fruitiness slight bitterness you've got pale ale flavors there's a bit of grapiness, white grape, green grape, um, maybe a slight grapefruit, and then a little bit of citrus as well in there to 
sort of bring that bitterness around the back of the tongue. Now it finishes quite dry, which you would expect possibly from the Nelson Souvenir if, it, if it's like a style of, um, you know, dry white wine almost as a finishing dryness. It's nice and light. It's got that sparkling carbonation. It's tasty, refreshing. I think it really helps that that Australian Pale Ale from Cooper's is, is a pretty good base kit to, to alter and to mess around with. So luckily that was already in my favour. I just had to add some of the hop additions and, and see where we went from there. So for the Nelson Souvin, we went for 10 grams as a dry hop. Excuse me. Um, and Nelson Souvin. I think I'm saying it right. You know, maybe I'm not. Hailing from a small bay on the north coast of the country's South Island, Nelson Souvin is a perfect summertime hop. It possesses strong fruity aromas and flavours of tropical fruit and crushed grapes that mingle with citrus-like tangerine and grapefruit. Hopefully you've got a little montage of some uh, Nelson Souvin hops there, as, as I describe over the top. Um, and then for your citra hops, it's a popular choice for American style beers, providing a strong citrus aroma to your brew. The citra hop profile also includes peach, apricot, passion fruit, lemon, melon, and other tropical fruit flavors and aromas. So you can kind of see where I was trying to go with a little bit of the, the aroma and the, and the flavor that might pass into the beer. You've got almost got the that green fleshy type fruit with the grape. Um, also giving you the, the the dry finish of like a dry white wine, as I've said. And then you've also got that citrus coming through, um, the, the, the grapefruit, the, the sort of lemon, and um, also complementing both sides with a little bit of maybe orange type fruitiness. It is quite fruity. It's very refreshing and light, and it just makes you want to drink more, and especially with it being slightly dry. There was 10 grams of Nelson Souvin and 15 grams of Citra in the dry hop. And I think it's a, it's probably one of the better beers I've brewed. And I probably say that every time I do a new brew. But yeah, it that, that was just brewed according to the label. Obviously, then we've had the, the hop additions and then it's been left. I think I bottled it in March time, so it's had a good few months, this being June now, outside in the garage. And it's still fresh, it still tastes good. It probably wouldn't want to leave it to another couple of months, really. The keg I've got out there is in the fridge, so hopefully that's, and it's in a stainless steel keg, so hopefully that's protected, um, because I'd like to, I'd like to get the tap on that, run a little bit of CO2 through it, and, and see if that pours out like a nice cask pint or as close as I can get at home um, at this stage and yeah I'd be excited to try that possibly with a couple of friends around the house but I'm happy with that that kit was fairly fairly cheap I think it's probably about 11 pounds for the actual tin of the uh, the Cooper's Australian Pale it would be nice just plain and simple as it is you don't need to play around with it it would be quite refreshing and nice easy drinking I did get a couple of bottles of their actual um their actual beer um which the kit is obviously based based on from their their brewery um bottle fermented as well they are and uh, i was going to do like a side by side comparison but because i've tasted this uh since brewing i just think the flavor profiles are kind of quite far apart so it wouldn't really be fair or any use to to compare them really um but I'm quite happy with that. I would do it again, certainly. Maybe change the hops out, do different hops next time, different combinations even. It's just finding that that base um, that base kit to, to use as a, as a platform then to mess about with your hops, you know. I, one day I'd like to do some more grain brewing or some boiling a bag or whatever it might be, but at this moment in time, I haven't got the space or the time to commit to it. Um, hopefully in the future I will. So at the moment it's it's picking up them kits that aren't too expensive and just playing around with different flavors and, and having a bit of a, 
having a bit of a go and a bit of a play around with it and see what happens. But I'm happy with that. It tastes nice. Slight bit of head retention still in there. It's still carbonated and nice and fizzy. You can see it there. So yeah, the um, the Aussie Pale is a success with the Nelson Suvin and the Citra hops. Um, I'm happy with it. Nice. So cheers to that. In terms of the podcast, we if you were if you were a listener of the the Man Cave Beers podcast, thank you very much. I appreciate that. But we're changing direction with that slightly. And uh, we're changing the name to Tales from the Social Club. And I'm going to be teaming up with my long-term drinking partner, Aaron. And we're going to be meeting up or, or over Zoom call, whichever we can fit in. We're going to do a podcast episode around a funny tale or story that's happened to us or that we've seen, we've been a part of from the pubs and clubs during our time. And the idea comes from sort of being sat in your local type drinking places. So your social clubs or your old style pubs. And if you sit there for long enough and take in your scenery and listen to the people interact with each other and how people talk, what they talk about, uh, you get the idea of them kind of stories that come up and that come out from there. Bit of pub culture type conversation. Um, we try and do it in a funny way, a lighthearted way, a little bit of beer talk. And then a little bit of maybe a roundup of recent beer news, that kind of thing. Hopefully, we're not talking about too many breweries that are unfortunately closing and we can talk about some more positive stuff now the summer's here and beer drinking, uh, beer festivals are well underway. All the links will be in the description for that. That was the Aussie Pale. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>